What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with the review for Love at the Lockup, you guys. Whew! Have y'all heard that new Normani song, Wild Side featuring Cardi B? Shoot your shot, because I'm bulletproof. Hey, I'm trying to shoot my shot at somebody that works with Normani that I've been having a crush on for years. Oh, having been having the biggest crush for years. We were actually friends at one point because we both worked in our local. Oh, never mind. Because if I keep going any further, y'all can figure out who I'm talking about. Um, yeah. Uh, where are we at? Love at the Lockup, season three, episode 39. And the episode is titled Third Time to Charm? Question mark. All right, you guys. So, with that out of the way, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel, and you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, then do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, you guys. We are 11 subscribers away from monetization. Now, I told you guys that I was going to do um, Growing Up Hip Hop. It's not happening. I don't feel it. Because Growing Up Hip Hop was Thursday. Love at the Lockup was just last night. So, I'm just going to do Love at the Lockup. And then we will be doing... Um, oh, shit. I need to do that, too. I need to get my stars back so I can be ready for Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, which comes on, on tomorrow. And then, also, we will be... Get, I mean, y'all y'all can already expect this one. That we're going to be doing Love and Marriage Huntsville. God, I hope Martel does not give me the blues like he did last season. Him and Arian. Has she, I mean, why don't she have that baby? Is he with her? Let's talk about this show first. So, um, with, uh, without further ado, you guys, let's get into the review, shall we? Shall let's start off with Doug and Rachel. I, I'm, I'm really dumbfounded and baffled when it comes to Rachel, right? So, Rachel and Doug wake up in bed the next morning together, and they go outside and Rachel lets Doug know that her mom is going to be dropping off little Dougie, right? So, and, you know, remember little Dougie said when he saw Doug, he was going to punch him and then give him a hug. But little Dougie is a, a, actually a little softy because he ran right up to his dad and gave him a hug. And so then we see Rachel's mom. Rachel's mom is talking to Doug. And I was looking at Rachel's mama's face. I'm like, Rachel's mama is not feeling Doug. And I, I'm looking at her I'm like, she's not feeling Doug. And I think, and I'm going to talk about it in just a minute. So then she's like, so are you going to be able to go to a trade school? He says, well, I, I, I did trade school when I was in prison, but the stuff that I did a trade for, it's not going to be too useful. I'm like, well, what was the purpose of you going to a trade school if it's not going to be useful when you got out? The purpose of going to do, doing a trade is so that when you get out of prison or or even or even when you even if you're not in prison, if you go to a trade school, the purpose of going to a trade school is to find a trade that you're one passionate about two that can make you some money that's the number one thing you know i wish you know sometimes i wish i went to a trade school because there's actually a trade school in my hometown well i'm in my hometown there's actually a trade school here and it's a branch of the junior college that i went to and they actually do do a little business program they don't give you a degree or anything like that i think they give you a certificate bitch i would have been happy with that certificate if i knew the things that i knew if i knew what i know now if 18-year-old me knew what 32-year-old me knows, my life would probably be different. Much different. Much, much different. So, I love the fact that little Dougie, he ain't got no problem reading his daddy. Because he basically told him, told Doug, you were never there for me. So, Doug and his, his and um, Dougie's mama, they got pregnant around when they were 15. And not long after that, he went to jail. I'm like, damn, you started early. Jesus. And like I said, little Dougie ain't got no problem reading his daddy, right? So little Dougie calls his daddy a womanizer. Talking about he's had ten girlfriends in the last what three, five years. It's it ain't been that it ain't been no ten year time frame. It's been recent. And Rachel and her mama cocked back more specifically her mama. Her mama, like I said, her mom is able to read this. She feels that Rachel is a meal ticket for Doug. I'm like, ta-da. Somebody sees that. I'm like, I don't understand how Rachel doesn't see it. Like, I really don't get how Rachel doesn't see that she's a meal ticket for this man. And I didn't realize that they were, you know, the ages between them. So Rachel is 35 years old and Doug is 28. He got him a sugar mama. That's what he got him. He got him a sugar mama. He really got him a sugar mama. He got him a, um, you know, someone to, you know, lay in bed with and, and you know, dump in them. I didn't, have to be, I didn't want to be that graphic, but you know what I'm saying. He got somebody he can lay in bed with, have sex with her, procreate with her. I guess I could have said that better. Yeah, 
Doug is using her. I, I, I'm, I'm really like, how do you not see it? And then they went out to dinner, right? Once again, Dougie on his daddy's neck, as he should be, right, for not being there for him. So, and I here's in my notes once again where it says, well, I was ad-libbing a minute ago, but how does she not see that she's a meal ticket? Like, you are a meal ticket and you are a warm vagina for this man. I don't get how she doesn't see it. Or maybe Rachel does see it and she's just oblivious to it. Rachel has to see it. Like, she literally has to see it. Now, Lil Dougie is disrespectful as fuck. I will say that. He's disrespectful. He's a disrespectful kid. And then I don't know how the fuck Doug thinks that he's going to come out of prison after not really being in his child's life and be a disciplinarian. It doesn't work that way, my dude. It doesn't work that way, but whatever. Um, Let's move on. Deont- Deontay and Nicole. Oh, my God. If stupid was a person, it would literally be Deont- Deont- Deontay, Deontay, whatever the fuck his name is. It would be him. So, him and Nicole are going back to his crib, right? And, you know, when they get in the door, you know, on the floor, there are some rose petals and there are some candles in the shape of a heart. I'm like, oh, that's so corny, but kind of cute, I guess. Then they go to the bedroom. More candles, more rose petals, Christmas lights hanging, and gifts for her. I'm like, dude, you are dumb as hell. Why? Why? You said it in the first episode, you don't like materialistic people. You are buying her material items. That is the definition of materialistic. That is a that, that is materialistic at its finest. Because if she wasn't material, if 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 um Nicole with two L's wasn't materialistic, Nicole would be like, oh baby, thank you for this, but I don't really need that. Like, keep it. You know, I I I I'm I'm fine with just. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all obstruct my microphone. Shout out to Big Brother. Gerald, do not obstruct your microphone. I love, you know what? I have not watched Big Brother at all since it started. I guess we'll watch it this week. I don't know. It's just, it's just, didn't, oh, sorry, y'all. Got off on a tangent. But, um, like, you could say, you should, like, if, if Nicole wasn't materialistic, she'd be like, oh, no, nah, baby, I don't need that. Like, all I need is, you know, quality time with me and you, you know, whatever. But she's not turning down any of the gifts that he's given her. With the exception of maybe lingerie, because there was some lingerie, right? He says he wants her to try it on. At first, she said no, but then she said, "Okay, I'll try it on, but you can't touch me." I'm like, "What is it with her and this you can't touch me situation?" You would think that maybe now I'm not gonna sit here and say that this is not a possibility, because maybe you know I'm not gonna sit here and say it's not a possibility. Maybe she could have been violated, you know, sexually violated in prison. And she just doesn't want to be touched. That's that's something that could have happened. I'm not gonna take that away. I'm not gonna say that that couldn't have happened. It could have, but with Nicole, that's not what it is. And I, you know, and De- Deontay is so stupid. Like, why not ask her? Like, baby, is everything okay? Like, you know, did something happen to you in prison? Like, that's the thing. Like, he his communication sucks. You could ask her, like, hey, baby, did something happen to you in prison? If she says yes, something happened to me in prison, he'd be like, "Okay, I respect that, and I'll, you know, and I'll take the time to, you know, uh, it'll take, to, you know, whatever, whenever you're ready for it, then we can get there." But he's not, he's not asking her questions. That's number one. That's the number one thing that I have a problem with is the fact that he is not asking her questions. Like I said, she could have been sexually violated in prison, and he doesn't know that, and he is continuously pushing up on her for sex. So then she tried on the lingerie. And, um, he came, she came out there, his ooh baby danced for me. She's like, okay, I'll dance for you. This fool starts taking his shirts off. I'm like, oh my God, this is a joke, right? Then she said, sit on your hands. I'm like, sit on your hands? Hell nah. Hell to the no. But when he took his shirts off, I was just like, ew, this is nasty. I don't need to see this. And then the fact that he kept begging her, baby, baby. Like, dude, you look really desperate and really thirsty. Ugh. It went it was it was uncomfortable to watch. It was very, 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 very uncomfortable for me to watch. So then she was like, I feel very uncomfortable because of my small boobs. Girl, how long have you had small boobs? Have you had small boobs your entire life? Okay, if you've had if you've been a part of the itty bitty 
<laughs> if you've been, a, I'm gonna say it. Don't get mad, you guys. If you've been part of the itty bitty titty committee for ever, then uh, what's the problem? Oh, that's right. It ain't none. So she tells him no sex until she get her new titties. I was like, well, what? No, girl, what? No. So then we see this scammer. She's going to get her hair done, right? And she meets up with one of her friends that just got out maybe, what, did she say six days before her? One of them. She got out before her, right? So, actually, before they got there, Deontay was talking to Nicole, talking about how he feels away about her not standing with him, him the night before, saying that he feels like she doesn't have any respect for him or the relationship. No shit, Sherlock. Even Stevie Wonder could tell you that. Stevie Wonder. Ray Charles, anybody that's blind, anybody that's blind can tell you that. That she does not respect you or the relationship, whatever the relationship is. I don't really think there is a relationship. I think that the relationship is in his head and she's just playing along with it. Like, I really believe that's what it is. So then, like I said, she was at the um, hair, you know, she was at the beauty shop, getting her hair done, getting some extensions in, right? And Nicole's friend, like I said, she was there. No shocker here. She asked Nicole, when was the last time you had sex? She was like, with a man or with a woman? I was like, exactly. I knew Nicole was with women. You couldn't tell me she was, wasn't with a woman. So then she says, it's sex in general. So Nicole says, I was with someone um, just before I got a week ago. I'm like, well, God dang. And she's like, oh, yeah, that is right. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. So then she was like, let's go out. She's like, with who? We don't know anybody. We, we we just got out of prison. She's like, well, you know, Tina was out. Tia. Tia's her name. Tia's her ex-girlfriend that she was with for a year. I think she said she was with her for a year. Tia got out, and she felt like Tia was cheating on her, so she broke things off with Tia. But Deontay doesn't know. Girl, so you going back to Tia and to your ex-boyfriend. Oh, girl, you getting around. But, I mean, I, I, can't, I ain't even hating on it. Deontay is really stupid. This girl is 23 years old. 23 year, a 23 year old, they're at their horniest. Like me at 23, I was the horniest I think I've ever been in my life. Like, you know, when you get them late night texts talking about what you doing, you immediately hop out of bed and go do what you gotta do. Now at 32, if you send me a late night text at two in the morning, my black ass is knocked out. I'm gonna keep it real with you. I'm knocked out until the next morning. I'm like, oh shit, I was sleeping when you text me. What's up? I've done that plenty of times. What's up? Um, let's move on. All right, you guys. Next up, Courtney and Josh. Oh, when it comes to Courtney and Josh, honestly, I think that both Courtney and Josh need to go see a, a therapist because there's issues on both sides, and I don't think they're a good. I don't think that Courtney and Josh are a good fit for one another just because of the issues between them. Because you guys remember in one episode. When Courtney was telling us about her her issue, you know, what she's been through with her family. I'm like, y'all, and then Josh in this episode. So Josh let us know that, you know, he was raised by his grandmother, but he called her his, his mom, right? And he told us also that he wrote her a letter and that he blamed her for giving him up. I'm like, damn. Like, I get it. When you get hurt, you, you say some hurtful things. Like, I get it. I, I do get I got where he was coming from. And I'm, am I saying it is? Am I saying it's okay? Not at all, because I've been in a situation like that as well, where I'll sit and think about something, especially when it comes to my maternal, my maternal mother. Uh, why did I say maternal? Well, I guess. Oh well, yeah, she is my maternal, my maternal mother, my biological mother. When it comes to her, um, when it comes to my biological mother. Like, I've said some things that are, are not the nicest to her because I thought, you know, I just, when I, you'll just, I will just sit sometimes and I'll be like, damn, like you've done me, you, you haven't been the best to me. So let me come back and be a little bit of an asshole to you. And I've definitely done that. Am I proud of it? No, I'm not. Would I take it back? Yes and no. Yes and no. Because some of the things that I've said to her are, tr are, are how, 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 I, how I feel. And I don't take back how I feel and how you make me feel. I don't take that back. 
Could I have used better word? Could I use better wording? Absolutely. So I got where Josh was coming from. Semi. I got where he was coming from. Um. Yeah, here in my notes it says I think that both of them. I, I really do. I don't think that Josh and Courtney are a great fit. And I, from what I've heard, Josh is back in jail for abuse. I just don't think that they're. I really don't think that they're a good fit for one another. So he calls his grandmother up, right? Her name is Mama Rose. And, you know, he wants to talk to her. He, apo- he apologizes on the phone. <coughs> oh, excuse me, y'all. So then he asked her, could he see her? And she said she didn't know if that was a, necessarily a good idea. But then I guess she o- okay to seeing him because he says, I'll see, you t- I'll come and see you tomorrow, right? So then, they, he, you know, we see him and Courtney and they get ready to go see her the next morning. And like I said, Josh and Courtney have been through a lot. Josh has been through a lot. So the reason that his grandmother got him is because his mother was on drugs, right? His dad at one point had, you know, visitation rights to him, but they got taken away from him because at five years old, they found out that his dad was giving him beer. I'm like, his his brain, his dad must have been on drugs as well. Damn, how do you give a five-year-old beer? That's crazy, but Josh, he apologized to his grandmother. <sighs> it's really sad. Really, really sad. Um, We're going to move on, you guys. Let's talk about Anissa and Jeff, who still, I mean, she literally, this literally gives me Angela and Tony vibes. I miss Angela and Tony so much. I don't miss doing Angela's voice as much, but I miss, I miss them. Speaking of um, Angela and Tony, now I know that they're, I don't know if they're going to be on this next season of Life After Lockup, which premieres in August. That they haven't given us a date yet. I do notice that they keep bringing Brittany and Marcelino back. What story does Brittany and Marcelino have at this point? I, I don't get it. I saw Brittany and Marcelino. I saw Amber and Puppy. I saw, who else did I see? God dang it. Sean! Oh God, I feel like we're going to read Sean again this season. <laughs> oh shit excuse me y'all uh. all right y'all so let's talk about anisa and jeff right so anisa is getting ready to go get uh jeff from prison right so her friend kyle has come over again right so she tells us that you know she doesn't like to drive like that so she she wants him to come with her i was confused because you still drove you still ended up driving but whatever so he asked her, is this real? <laughs> he once again asked her, is this real? She says, yes, it's real. So then he says, so let me ask you a question. What will happen to, with you and Jeff if Jeff ends up playing you like he's done in the past before? You know, show, you know, say he's going to show up, but not show up because you guys remember it's happened twice. She says, if it does happen again, he doesn't get a, he doesn't get a, well, he doesn't get a fourth chance because it, it, this is his third Anissa, I was about to say Angela. Anissa, have you ever heard the saying, fool me once, shame on you? Fool me twice, shame on me? I don't know if there's, I mean, there's not a third, there's not a third part because Gimme don't get got twice. Like, Gimme ain't gonna get got twice, right? So, I noticed in this scene that Anissa, so, <clears throat> my bad, y'all, that sneeze took me out. So in this scene with Anissa and Jeff, I mean not Jeff, Anissa and and Kyle, right? I noticed that when they left, it was daylight out, right? And they went to a bus station and from the and the bus station they had forty five minutes to get Jeff to the halfway house, right? What I note I was wondering like what was the timeline in this situation? Like what time did she leave her house and what time did they make it to the bus stop and what time did his bus get there? I didn't I didn't look at that. Because I was just looking like damn when the scene started it was daylight now it's pitch black it looked like i mean it is pitch black outside and you know the the producers had to amp it up make it like be like is he really gonna show up is he not gonna show up and then they had the bus pull off jeff was there what happened was jeff said he fell asleep on the bus and the lady came and woke him up and told him to get off the bus i don't want to talk about people's appearances and looks but jeff Jeff, 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 Jeff. Jeff's face, when you look at his face, 
his face gives you very much of I've been on drugs and it also gives you the, the sense of he's had a stroke now, here's another thing with Anissa Anissa keeps talking about this age difference between she and Jeff girl it ain't that big of a I mean it's a big difference but it ain't that big of a difference you're 51 which I don't believe that I do not believe that Anissa is 51 she does not look 51 and Jeff is 40 Jeff doesn't well Jeff you know what Jeff could be 40 that's drugs because Jeff did say that you know he he did he he, he said he racked up a lot of money with Nisa in those two times and at both of those times he never had any intentions of coming home to her what he said he was doing with the money that she was sending him was using it on drugs I'm like I can absolutely tell because your face I mean you give me hard you give me hard drugs on top of that and then when you talk you talk like he's got marbles in his mouth it was just like oh wow now, I will say Jeff was not feeling Mr. Kyle, the fact that Kyle was asking questions. Now, this situation with Jeff and Kyle, I mean, yeah, Jeff and Kyle, that's right. It gives me Tommy and, um, and, and Tony vibes. The only thing is, I don't think that Kyle wants to be, well, we don't know that just yet. I don't think that Kyle wants to be with um, Anissa, but I feel like Jeff is going to have an issue with Kyle, 100%. And her cousin, Penny. Oh, that really makes me miss Angela and Tony. What is going on? I re we know what? Love after lockup, life after lockup. We need to know. Actually, we do, We really do need to know what's going on with Angela and Tony, don't we? Do we know what happened with Angela and Tony? Because the last time we actually really saw Angela and Tony, wasn't he, at that, wasn't he with them at that hotel with them women? Did we ever wrap that storyline up? I'm going to go back and look at one of my... I'm going to go back and look at my last review of Life After Lockup when they were on there. And they weren't on this last season of Life After Lockup season. They weren't on this last one. They were on the one before that. I'm going to go look and see if we ever wrapped up with Angel and Tony because I don't remember. Let me know in the comment section, guys. I don't remember if we wrapped up with Angel and Tony. Either way, go. I need I need Angel and Tony on my screen. I need Angel and Tony back. But let's move on and wrap up the episode, you guys. All right, you guys, now we're going to talk about what my um, thumbnail is. Stan and Lisa. Burba. If fuck them kids was a person, it would be um, Stan. So, <laughs> Stan and Lisa, they finally make it back to his place, right? <laughs> when he got out that car, I cracked up laughing. Because he... <laughs> I cracked up laughing because he... I'm like, Stan, your old ass bones is about to give out on you, buddy. Like... You about to fall. You are about to fall because when he got out that car, oh, babe, oh, God. I'm like, your bones is about to give out on your old ass, right? Now, Stan's house is so outdated. I was looking, I was really in this episode looking at his house. I was looking at the garage. The garage is spot painted. I'm actually, it's not even spot painted. That bitch ain't even painted at all. Then that bedroom that he has Lisa Stan in, I'm like, what in the hell? You got a box fan, which I ain't, I ain't not gonna box fan because I, I love a, I love me a good box fan. Like that's how I sleep. I will sleep with the AC on, the ceiling fan on, and a box fan at my feet. So I don't, I'm not gonna sit here and judge it, but for somebody to be as rich as Stan is, the fuck you got a box fan for? The fuck you got a box fan for? That's what's bothering me. The box fan. Then that little bitty ass TV. That little, it was that little bitty ass TV. I'm like, dude. Now I get it. Some people don't put big TVs in their rooms. But that TV didn't even like it. That TV wasn't even 32 inches. That TV looked like it was 14 inches. I'm like, dude, what are you watching on that TV? Like, I, oh, God, no, I couldn't sleep in that room. I would, I would, I would scream. Then I looked at the old ass appliance, them old ass white appliances in his house. I was like, oh, wow. I was really, I was really looking at that microwave. It was the microwave for me. I was like, that microwave looked like it's old. That microwave doesn't look like it's from this decade, this century. That that microwave look like it's from the nineties. Actually, I'll give him the two thousands. That mic that microwave look like it's from the two thousands, right? So Lisa is still visibly upset with Stan. And Stan doesn't realize. I don't think Stan can read the room that Lisa was upset with him. I'm like, dude, I can see that Lisa's upset with you, and Lisa has every right to be upset with Stan with the way that he was dismissive of her son now granted her son is grown and he can take care of himself but if i mean if the man we don't know what's wrong with him the man could have a mental issue you know he could be having dealing with bouts of depression whatever 
but Stan doesn't Stan could, couldn't care less, right? So Stan is, you know, drinking some wine. At the end of the episode, she said, "How do you get that drunk off of wine?" It must have been some cheap ass wine. Now I got an issue with Lisa. I have a little bit of an issue with Lisa, right? So, I get it. You want to be there for your son. You want to make sure everything is okay with your son. I get that. You're not going to turn your back on your child. I definitely 100% understand that. But where Lisa lost me at was when she said, do you think he could come stay with us? Absolutely not. I was with Stan in that moment. Now, Stan, you lost me when you, you, I mean, you really actually sat there and criticized her parenting. That was so low. I was with Lisa when she left. Like, you criticized her parents, and that was that was disrespectful. That was disrespectful. But she said he gets mean when he gets drunk. I can see it. But that was that was low. You sat there and criticized her parenting. Like, really, Stan? That was fucked up, buddy. But that's the review, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Next week's episode, like, it is going to be a shit show. Uh, but let me know what you guys thought about that. So like the video, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. And share the video. Until the next one, you guys, please stay safe. You guys, take care of yourselves. Wash your hands, wear a mask or not. Whichever one you guys do decide to do, just be blessed and be safe and social distance. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.